All right, today we're gonna to be continuing the MW3 day one strategy guide where we talk about you know simple strategies that you can start using day one once the game drops uh, with you and your friends, whether you're playing wagers or game battles tournaments. This time we're gonna be looking at invasion, search and destroy. This time we're going to go on to the offensive side rather than the defensive side like we saw back in episode one. And we're gonna be talking about a simple B push that you and your friends can start taking on. So you guys already know we're throwing it back with the 2010 gameplay to see what teams were doing back then just to give you an idea of what you can possibly do going into mw3 so this is a standard uh, b push where they're sending one guy through the middle of the map and three guys onto that b side of the street and really just trying to make sure that you can outnumber 3v1 towards that guy on the b site you know usually they would only send maybe one uh, and sometimes two guys towards that b side anyways so you're usually going to be able to outnumber them it's just if you can cut off those reinforcements effectively so we're going to take a look at nightmare here he's going to be that flex middle player for the team as you see for the rest of the team here kalani he's using an ar to watch over this b street while the rest of his team starts pushing up through this broken area of the map and when you're trying to do this as a team you know you're sending those three players toward that b street you want to be using all of these headies and these broken buildings to your advantage to actually use those as covers so that anyone that might be either sniping or pushing that street up pretty quickly with an air watching over them can't get easy kills on you while you're trying to push up with your team so we're going to move back over to nightmares position here and what he's doing here is actually really important to see uh, because this is a crux position of the map for this offensive team what he's doing here is he's laying down by the cafe and what he can do here is watch for anyone that might be playing towards that tank you know we were talking about that in that previous video talking about invasion defense and you'd usually have someone towards that tank or towards that garbage can really playing and trying to get info towards the middle of the map and if the defense on the b side felt some pressure towards that side he would call to that other person to start you know helping him out whether it's throwing his tax or actually full-on rotating towards that side of the site so that he can actually get some help and then stuff any sort of push that way he's basically just trying to get as much info towards the middle the map as possible so that you can relate to his teammates what's going on what he sees and how they can actually adjust to that in case they're starting to continue on to their push towards that site and what he does here by looking to the left is really important too so you're going to see he looks to the left and what he's doing is trying to find that specific timing on anyone on the defense that might be pushing through the cafe super fast you know if you saw that first video you know i'll probably actually link it just because a lot of the concepts uh transfer over to this video as well but in that first video i was talking about how the defense has some some really good timings to get into that cafe and actually chow out and has that timing on the offense for anyone that might be pushing through the cafe this way on their side so they have that timing to get there quicker so he's looking out for anyone that might be playing super aggressive on that defense side and again if he sees someone all he has to do is you know get that info relay that to his teammates and start playing for them if he wants to you know he can just play a corner make sure that he has all of their back for them and being that anchor towards the middle of the map making sure that his teammates get onto that site and he has the information on anyone that might be pushing through on the other side or rotating from mid uh, to try and stuff that push. So he's waiting here, waiting for that initial push, and then he goes back towards this mid cut. As you can see here, he can have a full free access through this caged area. So it's really hard for the defense to actually see this type of play, but if they actually know the spot, they can technically look for it. But it's really just making sure that you get that info for your team. You're not really expected to get kills in this position. So that's why it's super important. It's really important just to stay alive and get that info. The rest of the three guys are going to be working on that site so you know if you get a kill it's a super big positive but if you don't get a kill you know just getting that info is your job so it's pretty boring gameplay here obviously he's just anchoring it making sure that no one rotates for that side you as you see his team does get a first blood onto that b site so it's going to be a free open site for them because most of the time you'd only see one person on that side so again going into mw3 you're probably going to see only one maybe two guys so really outnumbering in that situation is going to be super key and then you can easily get the bomb down from there and as you can see once again nightmare here he's now throwing his tax towards the courtyard and really playing this specific heady so he's actually just both making a distraction for anyone that might be playing mid but he's also getting info for anyone that might have been court side or might have been rotating from court to b so he's really doing both at the same time both being in that distraction for anyone that might be playing courtyard but also being a nuisance and getting that info for his team uh, so he's doing both at the same time so it's a really good play out of nightmare here it doesn't really look like he's doing much but as you're going to see here he gets a hit marker on someone that was courtyard so he gets that information too he runs back throws a nade as well 
and he's just you know he's playing this heady playing super safe not trying to die but just trying to get as much info as possible so this is really good play out of nightmare here and then as you can see here he changes up his position plays another decent credit where you can see both anyone that might be rotating from the a site through towards this mid cut and now we're finally going to go over to the other side where the other three guys have already got the site control as you can see here one guy is playing onto the tank on this little heady over here this guy in this corner it's a deep corner that you can't get seen from anyone that might be pushing through this b street this way so you can really tuck yourself in and just watch your cross for this enemy player you know this is a decent setup but in my opinion you know kalani is probably just watching the full flank here because nightmare didn't have it but you know in an ideal position you know what you could do here is you can have this guy in the corner watching his mid cut this way and then you can have kalani this way uh watching the a street so you're both playing this you know x cross and i'll show it to you later on in the overhead view and then you have jiga who's planning the bomb here he can plan it super safe and then use this as like a, a head glitch for himself and you have a really nice tight set up onto the B site. It's going to be pretty easy to outnumber people and then pretty easy to get the bomb down if you get a really aggressive uh, push like this. And especially going to Modern Warfare 3, you know, once we have a trophy, especially on offense, you can do this with a trophy while you have it and then just place the trophy, you know, behind the bomb site, and you're just pretty clear from any tax that the defense might be trying to throw on uh, during the retake. And you should be actually pretty free to get this round win uh, once you get the bomb down. So you're not going to see it here on screen, but Nightmare does get a kill from someone who was rotating towards this A side. You'll see it in the kill feed uh, right in a second. As you can see right there, he gets a kill on somebody with his UMP and the Kalani is going to get that final kill on someone on the b street with that same setup i was talking about with the x cross you know he finally gives up the tank and then starts watching the b street and he gets the kill on the b street for the final guy as you see he turns around as you see here he's looking that way they finally get the kill and right as the bomb is planted they win the round so we'll take it to the overhead view this will give you a little bit better understanding uh, rather than just those initial point of views of each player you can see a broader sense of how the strat is supposed to be used so as you can see here we have the full invasion map uh, i'll take you through the defense you know let's say they're playing that standard one two one that we were talking about in the defensive video so this is the standard setup for the defense and our offense we're going to have our main uh info getter here behind the cafe he's going to be watching uh around here to watch anyone that might be rotating from the a site to the B site, you know, whether he's playing this spot or this spot and really getting that info on anyone that might be crossing from the A site or from courtyard or from uh, this tank and, and really playing that way either to full flank or to actually go through this B cut. So he's just getting info on anyone that might be middle of the map. As I said before in that defensive video, middle of the map pressure was so important. So if you're able to at least get that info for the rest of your team that's gonna be pushing that B street, uh, that's all you really needed to do for your job there. And then on the other side, the three main guys working this push on the B street you can have someone with an AR or even a sniper uh, watching over his teammates uh, this way right at the start. But these other two guys, usually probably subs, are going to be pushing through these broken buildings, just making sure that they use all of that cover to their advantage and then uh, try and teamwork anyone that might be either playing on the site or had already pushed up and the sniper was either watching over them or the AR was watching over them and really just at least working that first initial kill. Uh, but if they do have one guy playing in the back here, making sure that you're using that cover to really stay alive in that situation because as long as you can stay alive you can number that enemy team on the bomb site and the defense will have to pay retake anyways so once again this guy in the back cafe he can play this little heady here throw his tax in this courtyard area as long as he's throwing his tax in you know these two areas he's at least going to get some type of info most of the time you would have at least one or two players there so you can get at least some type of info there if you're not getting them with tax you're at least seeing them you know it's a really small chance that you don't either see someone from that position or throw attack and get something from there. And if you want to keep playing this spot, you know, you can keep playing this spot if they haven't seen you already, but you also play, you know, super deep uh, flank positions where it's in the mannequin or maybe something closer to your team where you're playing this deep street over here if you have an AR and you can watch uh, the full push through or even just wrapping around and going towards this bomb site with your team and just having that extra body there is also good. So, you know, making sure that you have bases covered based on what the rest of your team is doing. If they need an extra body on site because they died, Maybe you can wrap back to that, but most of the time you're going to be playing that info getting position uh, towards the middle of the map and being that, you know, lurker for your team and making sure that they're not actually expecting you in that position because the rest of your team is full on rushing towards that B site. So you're playing that lurker position, trying to get any free kills that you can get. Now, when we were talking on post plant, you know, let's say this is the B site right here and uh, we'll just draw it out real quick. But this was that deep corner that I was talking about. You can really hide yourself from anyone that might be pushing up this B street. They have to full on fully clear you if you're playing this position. 
position. So uh, it's a really nice spot, especially in like 2v1s, uh, where you can just play an X cross with someone uh, on your team. So let's say that other person is playing this tank, playing those headies, so that they can watch you know this B street or the flank from this position. So most of the time, you in this position would have the mid cut for them, and they would have your B street. So they create this you know X cross here. This is what we call an X cross in Call of Duty. I'll probably do another deep dive into X crosses and like the methodology behind them. But this way you have everything covered from both sides. And then your final guy can just, you know, lay down over here, get the bomb planted. And what he can do with MW3 is just uh, place a trophy system right behind him. So anyone that might be trying to retake with some tax gets fully stuffed with that trophy system and you should be pretty safe on the site. And talking about this tank player, you know, it's, it's pretty important for him to stay alive. So, you know, he wants to be using this heady as much as possible to his advantage. And what he can even do is just keep angling himself to watch specific cuts. So he can angle himself to watch this mid cut if you're trying to watch something else or if this guy is not alive or you can angle yourself to watch this building over here or again angle yourself to watch b street you can really use that heady to your advantage in that sense and making sure that you're always working off of this info that this guy is getting so if he's playing a deeper flank spot and someone from the a street is pushing through here you know he should get a free kill here but let's say he dies in a weird scenario they're expecting him to be there you know you'll have to adjust to that so if that happens you know you're probably gonna have to change your position because you're not gonna be safe here here because they can flank this way and have a free angle on you onto this tank or you know it might be possible to angle yourself I'm not sure too much of the angles that way uh, but you know if you want to play a deeper spot I think this is like a chicken coop or something over here if you want to back up towards that uh, that could be a possibility too but just like anything you're really just gonna have to adjust to what your teammates are seeing on the map and if there is a possibility of some guy fully flanking and your team doesn't have that covered you know let's say he was playing that cafe spot that the other guy was and trying to get that info mid but someone from the a street comes and kills him you know, you have to know that the flank is open from that point and you have to be ones to adjust to that pressure. So that's a really simple B push for you guys to use on day one going into MW3. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and I hope you guys can use this to your advantage uh, once the game drops. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.